Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. There are many choices of aftermarket antennas marketed to enhance portable radio coverage at VHF frequencies. Today we're going to look at and study several examples and compare them to one another to see if the benefit they provide over a stock portable radio antenna is worth the larger form factor in regards to their employment and task focused communications. What, if any, benefit do they provide over the simple use of a quarter wavelength radial tied to the radio chassis, which costs less than a dollar and does not increase the bulk of the radio's physical package? Something like this here that I did a video on several years ago, and it gives good performance. You know, discarding the factory antenna and replacing it with an aftermarket one arbitrarily has become the norm in radio hobbyist circles. And we owe it to ourselves to ask the question, is this due to marketing and social media influence or is it truly based on science? There is historical precedent of the use of aftermarket antennas to extend portable radio range and perhaps the largest users of such have been in wildland fire suppression. Such as these two examples from my reference collection. Specifically, this is a BK or a Bendix King EPH with a quarter wave whip, and this is a Motorola MX350 with a Super Sky Probe Infed half wave antenna. Now, factory antennas in VHF service are a quarter wave length, which is this length here typically, and Here's a helical antenna, which is just basically a coil, it's just a shortened antenna, and sometimes you have a combination of this and a whip together, but the purpose of that is, is to shorten the physical package of the antenna. Now, typically physically shortened antennas do exhibit narrower bandwidth and reduction in performance as compared to a full-size whip. But this makes the antenna much more practical for task-focused communications. Now, one thing to consider is, is that a quarter wave antenna needs a quarter wave to work against, which most radio chassis will not provide. And this is why the simple radial hack works well. It simply augments our OEM antenna. Now, in my humble opinion, any of these in-fed half wave antennas extended represent the most performance you could squeeze out of a portable radio mounted antenna due to the antenna having a reduced ground plane requirement. The measurement of performance increase in antenna systems is expressed as gain. Gain is radiation focus, nothing more. Like a binocular magnifies what you're looking at, it also costs you by reducing your field of view. Gain so often is an overused marketing term because you need to have an exact comparison, and typically this is expressed in dB over an isotropic radiator, dBi, or decibels over a dipole, dBd. Now, you need to know where you are to know where you're going, which means you need to have a reference, an isotropic radiator or a dipole in these examples right here. So when someone comes up to you and tells you that this antenna gives you a 6 dB gain, you need to ask 6 dB over what exactly? Maximum gain is not desirable in all terrain. For example, a 5 8 wave, it focuses most of its energy towards the horizon and less up tilt. Now, is this good in mountains? Perhaps not. Is it good in urban terrain? Perhaps not. Again, you need to know where you are to know where you're going. So now that we've discussed that, let's talk about where we're at and where we're going. Where we're at is the ICOM FAS270C, which is a good antenna. This is the factory antenna that was provided with our test radio here, and this will be the control. Some of the antennas we'll be testing are the Smiley Duck, the Smiley 5.8 Slim Duck, and this is a Smiley telescoping whip, which is a tri-band, which does two meters, one and a quarter meters, and 70 centimeters. Now, I really like the Smiley antennas, and I've used these for several years. You can change the RF connectors by just spinning them off and reusing the whips on other particular connectors that you may be interested in. They also can handle 50 watts of RF, which is impressive. And you'll actually see that in testing that these antennas actually favor the amateur bands of 144 to 148 megahertz, whereas many of your other particular antennas that you're going to see tested favor the commercial spectrum. Some of the other antennas we'll be testing are the signal stick, which comes highly recommended by my friends. The antenna is light and flexible, inexpensive, and is a quarter wave at two meters. The next is the Nagoya NA771, which is very popular dual band antenna with the Baofeng crowd, and is a quarter wave at two meters also. 
Next we have the Rimtronics VU100S Whip, which is a quality dual band antenna that was recommended word of mouth to me. And this is also a quarter wave at two meters. And lastly, we have the HYS TC77 IFR, which is a dual band blade type of antenna that is a quarter wave at two meters. Well, now that we've got the background out of the way, Let's get started with our testing. Our first test is going to be a simple field strength measurement using a field strength meter that I built. And the article, how you can build your own, is in the video description. The radio we'll be using is my ICOM ICT-70A from my Baofeng versus ICOM video seven years ago using a low power mode. Now we will place the meter in a fixed location and transmit using the exact same location with the radio position in the exact same position as the operator would be conducting a Q-cell like this from a standing position. The numbers you will see in this test are not measurements per se, but they will give us some comparison data right off the bat. Let's start our testing. This is the ICOM factory antenna. This is the Nagoya whip. This is the Smiley Tri-Band Telescoping Antenna. This is a Smiley Helical Duck. Here's our Smiley 5 8 Duck. Here's our Signal Stick. Here's our Remtronics Whip. Here's our generic Amazon tape measure whip. Now let's see what just adding a tiger tail does to our factory whip. Our second test is going to be conducted with my Onritsu Cellmaster with the antenna under test directly attached to the top and the data recorded is going to be the SWR 146 megahertz, the resonant point of the antenna under test, and the return loss at 146 megahertz. The third test is going to be measuring the SWR at 146 megahertz with the antenna under test attached to my chassis simulator which simulates the conductive mass of a portable radio chassis and allows comparison of the antennas under test held in the same position of use as was done during the field strength test. This part will be difficult to film but I will record the results for our review. Now in these next few slides we're going to look at the SWR measurements of each one of these antennas under test attached to the cell master and you'll see that at the bottom and then at the top you're going to see the frequency that the antenna is most resonant at. It's easy to see the bandwidth looks awful narrow with that factory antenna. And what you're seeing here is, is the factory antenna placed on the chassis simulator and the bandwidth is showing the 3 to 1 SWR bandwidth. That is 3 to 1 would be the very top of the scale shown on the VNA. And then if you look at the frequency, that's 144 to 148 megahertz. So our 3 to 1 bandwidth is good on that. And in the second slide, this is when we added the radial to the chassis simulator, and you can see what its effects were on this particular antenna. The next few slides are going to show our antennas under test and what their return loss is. And normally when you hear the term loss, it's usually negative, but in return loss, the more return loss you actually see, it means the more efficient the antenna's match is. So typically with an antenna, you want to see a return loss of 10 or greater. And you can see uh, most of our examples do not meet that standard. However, this does allow us to compare these antennas against one another. Our third and final test will be using my Enritsu Cell Master with the antenna under test affixed to it, receiving a low power FM signal 
at 146 megahertz. The transmitter will be located approximately 300 foot away and we're going to record the measured signal strength in decibel milliwatts. I will then compile all the data captured and we'll go ahead and present it to you. And like paternity court, the results are in. And this is one page. I also have a second page of data that we're going to go over. You can see that the columns represent the tests that were performed. This line is the equipment used to perform the tests. This line is our control line, which is the ICOM factory antenna. These lines here are our devices under test and the results of each test. This line is our deviation line and the data recorded here is how different the data captured was from our control antenna and the best performing device under test the data is recorded here in bold. Our first test was the simple field strength test and the meter is graduated in microamps. So the data captured here is measured thus. Now, this is not an exact measurement. This basically is just used for comparison purposes. And the antenna configuration that did best in this particular test was the factory antenna with a radial placed on it, as shown here. The second test we're going to look at is the simple SWR test and what we did was we took the antenna under test and we placed it on top of my on Ritsu cell master and the data is recorded here. The antenna that performed best in this test was the Spiley telescoping tri-band antenna. And in this test here we can see which frequencies our antennas under test are most closely matched to and many or more closely matched to the commercial band than to the 2 meter amateur band, specifically 146 megahertz, which is our frequency we were using for our test. And again, the Smiley Tri-Band Telescoping Antenna performed best in this test. The data we captured in this next test is return loss, and return loss is just another way of expressing match efficiency of an antenna. The higher the number, the better, and the Smiley telescoping tri-band antenna perform the best in this test. So now we've moved from using the Onritsu to using our chassis simulator. You know, when you take an antenna and you place it on top of something that has enough conductive mass, like that Cellmaster did, for that antenna under test to work against, it's easy to see the results there and they're more desirable. However, when you actually take an antenna and you place it on something with less conductive mass that more closely approximates a portable radio, it doesn't have as much material to work against. And also, that particular device has to interact with the operator's body as well. And that's the reason why we're using the chassis simulator. We recorded the data with a Nano VNA that is actually attached to that chassis simulator with a very short SMA jumper. And this is the results we gathered from that particular test. The antenna that performed best in this test was a Smiley 5.8 slimline duck. Now in this test, we simply added a quarter wavelength radial to our chassis simulator. And you can see that across the board, that has given us a much which improved matches considerably across all the antennas under test. Our Smiley Tri-Band Telescoping Whip did best. Now we've moved to our second page and our first test is we've taken our 
antennas under test, placed them on top of the Onritsu, and we've taken a small FM transmitter, located it 100 yards away, and with the Onritsu in a spectrum analyzer mode, we've recorded the peak signal strength at 146 megahertz and recorded the data for you here. Now we can finally start talking about gains because the data we're capturing is in decibel milliwatts and we also have an antenna to compare it to which is our control antenna. So the results you can see here are how much gain or how much loss there is compared to the control antenna. And again our smiley telescoping whip performed the best. Now we're repeating the same test, except now we've mounted our antennas onto our chassis simulator and we are recording the data with a tiny SA spectrum analyzer attached to the chassis simulator and the results are shown here. Same thing again, the Smiley tri-band telescoping wet performed best. Now we're repeating the same test again, except now we've added a quarter wavelength radial to our chassis simulator, and the results are recorded for you here. Again, the Smiley tri-band telescoping whip performed best in this test. Now for our final test, we're repeating the field strength test, except what we've done is, is we've added the radial to each one of these particular antennas on our ICOM portable radio and perform the test again and the results you can see are here. I hope you found this information useful. We saw that there is an advantage to using a full-size quarter wave VHF antenna in portable radio service in regards to performance and bandwidth. However, the products tested here are cut for commercial spectrum with the exception of the Smiley products, and these were typically cut too long. For example, this was our poorest performing antenna, and this is cut for like 137 megahertz, if I remember correctly. And our best performing antenna was this telescoping whip from Smiley. However, in order to glean the performance in this antenna, you're going to end up having to run it in an extended position such as this. So I don't find that to be terribly practical in my opinion. Now the Smiley 5 8 wave antenna here which is nice and flexible was a good compromise and did provide a performance increase over the factory antenna. The factory whip was cut perfectly for the 2 meter band but like most compact profile antennas does not provide the performance that a full size example does. The addition of a quarter wavelength radial to the base of the RF connector on this antenna did provide an excellent augmentation to the factory whip and very closely equates to the performance of a full-size quarter wave at almost no expense. You know, even a quarter wave strand of wire from a Cat5 cable wrapped around the chassis side of the RF connector could suffice as a field expedient. And this also increases the performance of the full-size antennas as well in testing, so its use isn't exclusive to the factory whip. The full-size quarter wave antennas that we tested were all very close in performance and the best of which was the signal stick. The HYS blade antenna exhibited the lowest performance in the full-size class of antennas tested. However, its received performance with the Onritsu was good, so perhaps as a scanner antenna this would serve well, but that's to be determined. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.